about how being a hack was one of the best things that happened to him. <laughs> yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be in Nuremberg this morning. Uh, ich kann euch ein bisschen in Deutsch auch uh, grüßen. Und wenn ich das gut hab, uh, gemacht hatte, hab, whatever, uh, you can like, let me know. Did I do good in German? There you go. <laughs> I used to live in Stuttgart for about two years, every other year, like in the summertime. So I caught some German. Didn't speak it since, I don't know, 98. So uh, if you want to pr help me practice in the, in the breaks, I'll be very gr grateful to you. Uh, don't forget the hashtag. I told you if you have your phones with you, uh, I will be very happy if you don't look at me and you look in your phones because you're tweeting about the event and not watch anything else. So if you're tweeting about the event with the official hashtag, then you're excused. And I will not be very mad. Uh, okay, so who am I? You've heard my name is Valentin Vesa. Uh, I'm a father of two, a uh, husband, of course. Uh, I started working when I was 14 years old. That was back in 1994, for those of you doing the math. And I was selling candles. I had a friend who was living in the United States of America, so he was sending candles back home in Cluj, in Romania. And me and a friend of mine, we were selling them to girls in high school. And we said, you know, uh, his mom said that we cannot give him for free because she needs money to raise money for the kids, so that's why we can't give it, you know, a free candle, but we want to sell it. So we make a lot of money in candles, you know, time fraction <laughs> of money. Uh, I love photography, I, I love social projects. Uh, I used to live in these countries for you know, months or years, Romania, Germany, I told you about, uh, Italy, Austria, some part in the USA, and now I'm back in the Dracula country of Transylvania in Romania. I live in the city of Cluj-Napoca, that's right a, bit, a little bit northwest in Romania. Um, and I'm doing, for the past 18 years and something, I was doing a lot of social media, marketing online, and for Sucuri, I work as a social media specialist, and I go to events like this one. Uh, I don't eat pork. Who else? <laughs> Anybody else don't eat? Yeah, there you go. But I also don't eat seafood or fish. I started eating tuna fish a year back, so I'm kind of a turning. <laughs> um, and I love Coca-Cola when I have to clean my bathroom. <laughs> and. Uh, my first WordPress install was back in, in 2009. Did anybody else in the room install WordPress for the first time in 2009, just so I don't feel alone? There you go, one, okay, give him a, a clap for him. <laughs> 2009, so I don't feel like the only one in the room. And I was doing the Shoebox project and WordPress. This is why I started looking into finding a CMS for my first website. Me and my wife, we started this project. I will show you a small video. We don't have uh, audio badly, but I will give you the link maybe at the end. You can watch it on YouTube. It's not such important audio as what you'll see. And it will just describe very uh, briefly what the project is about. Hopefully, it will start. Or just imagine the music, OK? So mom buys a new pair of shoes for her son. Uh, he's wearing them, putting some sweets in the same shoe box, wraps it nicely, and goes to a collection center to be given to a poor child. And the project is called Shoebox. That's the website. We do have an English page if you want to check it out. And this, the text there says, uh, make a child happy every Christmas. So what the project is doing is, in 2006, our son was three and a half years old, and we wanted to teach him how to give uh, because he was having toys, clothes, you know, sweets. And I thought, me and my wife, that it's important for him to know, even as a young age, that he needs to share from everything that he has with somebody that maybe doesn't have the same. And we went to a poor family, and we put some uh, you know, things in a shoebox. We wrapped it nicely. It was just before Christmas in 2006. And we wanted to see his feeling. We wanted to see what he will understand from it. 
And he went to kindergarten and he explained to all his colleagues, this is what we did, we go to these children. I told him, don't say to nobody, when you do a good deed, you don't go and, hey, I did something good, just keep it for yourself. But he didn't, of course, because he was three and a half years old. You know, how could I expect him to listen? And this thing grew from there because the parents heard about it. They come and ask us, hey, what are you doing? What project are you doing? There was no project, it was just, you know, a family thing for Christmas. And this was in 2006. In 2015, so last year for, for Christmas, we gathered more than 100,000 boxes in 19 countries, uh, 203 cities, and 416 collection centers, all run by volunteers. There's no organization behind it. There's no structural, you know, ONG or NGO, something like that. Nothing. Everybody who has time, they come in. Some people stay for a year, two, three, and they go back, or they just stay with us, like I call them the prisoners, you know, they're still with us. <laughs> and uh, so we had this project in 2006, and then by 2009, I thought, you know what, we need a website because we need to send people somewhere. We didn't have a Facebook page until 2011, I think. So I didn't think about Facebook, although I should have, because <laughs> it's working very good. And so, what do you do when you want to, you know, go online? You search for the lowest possible price <laughs> because you're a charity, you don't have money. So, you first get a domain name. If it's possible for free, that's great. If not, as in my case, you have to pay for it. So, you have to not eat for a few days. You know, as a freelancer, you have been there, right? You know, I know, I see you. <laughs> and then you buy the cheapest hosting, like I said. And luckily, your host has cPanel installed. And inside cPanel, I found Softaculous, or whatever you pronounce it. And, uh, sounds familiar? And in there, I found WordPress. That's the first time I've ever heard of the name WordPress. Initially, when you hear WordPress, for somebody that is outside of the system, you think it's about journalists, some press, some, what is this? But I read there the five minutes install, you know, go back, go online in five minutes. So I said, I don't have much more time than five minutes, so I will go with this one. And this is what I, <laughs> so this is the first, <laughs> sorry. So this is how the website was looking in uh, December 11, 2009. Well, this is because the Wayback Machine doesn't import CSS, so we did have some colors. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. But yeah, so this is something that I could do with the whatever theme was default back in 2009. And then if anybody knows vladstudio.com, maybe, in Russia, used to be a famous theme author, he kind of a, doesn't do it anymore, but he gave me his premium theme for free. So that was like a freemium model <laughs> back then. And he said, as long as you put a link back in the footer going to me, I was like, a link? What is that? But he explained. So then everything became much clearer. And from 2009 to 2014, uh, when the story that I want to tell you about happened, uh, we continued to do improvements. So this is part, I think this is a screenshot from 2014 in the beginning, uh, already having some custom background. Now we know stuff, right? So we add things, we have a logo and all that. And as I was learning more about WordPress, I started to also uh, help other NGOs or friends or somebody that wanted to go online. If somebody, I've heard the keyword, I want to go online, I'm like, I know, five minutes, I know how to do it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is, of course, auto installer. You know, I didn't have the pretension to do it on FTP and all that. It's just next, next, next. So I admit. And, but, but you know, then something happened that I wasn't prepared for. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please hold your eyes because this will not be a nice sight. <laughs> This happened. <laughs> December 22nd, 2014, 4 a.m. I will never forget this moment. I wake up because the next day I had to send the newsletter out to all the volunteers. And I was looking in my inbox and I saw emails coming back saying, you know, rejected email, rejected email, rejected email, rejected email, hundreds. So I was thinking, I did not send an email. So how can I get a reject email from somebody? Because I didn't send anything. Of course, PHP file somewhere on the server, sending out spam. So the website was hacked, obviously, as you can see, by Giri Reader Haich or whatever. And uh, pretty soon it became blacklisted by Google, which happens. 
And then I got an email from my host, dear host, uh, who said, we are about to suspend your site <laughs> because it's sending out spam in thousands. And if you've ever been there, raise your hand. Nobody has that? Okay. Normal people here too. So what I tried, of course, what everyone tries in the beginning is do it yourself, right? I, I need to fix this. I know how to do it. It's not going to be a problem. I'm going to check some HD access, maybe look into MySQL database, maybe see what you know, WP admins are new there that have a crazy name. But two days later, this happened. <laughs> so whatever efforts I did, <laughs> you know, trying to fix it myself for two days, ended up being hacked by another team of hackers. I have no idea even now if I was targeted or if it was just a random thought or if it was just, you know, I don't know. But anyways, this is how it looked like uh, <laughs> on Christmas Day. <laughs> this is my website. So, you know, Merry Christmas. So what do we do? When you know that you can't do nothing by yourself or you tried everything you could, then you go to Google, right? And you go like, you know, how can I clean my website? Who can clean my website? You know, is there anybody can help me do that? And yes, it was. This is my actual wallpaper in, the, in my laptop because they helped. Now you know who they are. So what did I do? I do, I found them and I go, this is an actual screenshot of my first live chat with a support team at Sukuri saying, hey, I'm desperate. You know, I know stuff about Technica, but this is really way beyond my ears and eyes and I don't know how to fix it. Hillary is still with us. We still have fun about this chat all the time. And, uh, you know, I explained my problem and she said, you know, relax, everything is fine. We got this, we know, but, ah, you know, it's very blah, blah, blah. No, sir, just calm down, you know, it'll be fine. So two hours later, the website was clean, back online. Now, the good part about, you know, <laughs> on January 2015, as I was putting together the report for the shoebox 2014, the, the initial year, um, I began looking into Sukuri, right, my savior. And I found out that they have a social media job. I was doing social media. I loved Sukuri already. They saved my ass. So I was like, you know, I'll apply. And one email and three interviews later, this happens, right? Meaning I got the job. Well, that photo is not this shirt, right? So we have enough shirts. We, we give out to everybody. This is in the presentation for a lot of time. So just so everybody knows, right? And we do switch them. Like when they really wore out, <laughs> we switch them. So I left my corporate job, nine to five. That was a good story, actually, because when my daughter went to the, you have zero grade here in Germany? Like before school, they go to preschool. OK. So when she went to preschool, the teacher asked, no, no, after kindergarten. Like in between, well, anyways, okay. So they ask her, what are your parents working? Like what are their jobs? So because my wife is a paramedic, she said, well, my mom saves lives. And you know, she was the hero of the house. Of course, I was just, there, just the guy there. And then what is your dad doing? <laughs> so she said, my dad comes home, takes a shower and sleeps. <laughs> um, true story. So. Imagine yourself being a dad. Anybody here be a dad? Okay. So just imagine your daughter or your son going to school and telling the teacher that you just come home and take a shower. Well, at least I took a shower. <laughs> and you sleep. So that was the moment I realized that being a corporate guy, going to job, and you, know, you officially have an hour from, what, 9 to 5 or 6, but you go home like 10, 11 p.m. Because, you know, we have this release and we need... I was doing testing, social media, and all that. And it's, you know, it's just a, a moment in life when you decide you want to do something else. I just wanted to spend more time with my kids, with my wife. I wanted to you know, see places, travel to cities, and to Nuremberg, for example. And not necessarily speak in a conference, but you know, why not? So it all started with that year behind being hacked. Not a very true, not a, not a very, uh, you know, good story, but a true story. And then uh, this started. So I got a job as a brand evangelist with Sukuri full time. I'm working from home. I don't go into an office. I have my own hours. I get to travel the world. These are just some of the pictures. I think the one in the left low corner is from here. Maybe you saw it on Twitter. And also that one, the third one. I don't know the name of the castle, but I'm sure you, you've seen it in Nuremberg. 
so I travel, I do events, you know, I meet people, I network with everybody. If I didn't speak to anybody in this room, come find me outside. I love to talk to people. Uh, I'm not so much into the technical aspects, but I can talk. Like, we can discuss anything you want. And if I don't know the answers, I'm always, you know, sending an email back to the team saying, I have a question and I don't know how to answer it. And they're like, we have an answer for you. I don't know where the Joomla audio guy is, but he sent me a question and I already have an answer for him. So, we are hiring, if anybody wants to, okay, get on the board. And let's go to why being hacked was a good thing. Now, when I proposed this title, uh, I've seen some, you know, tweets <laughs> from people like, you are from a security company, and you talk about why it's good to be hacked. Yes, it, it is good to be hacked because you realize the position, the knowledge, or lack of it, that you have. So, first of all, it made me, like, it really, really forced me to do research. Hey, what did just happen to me? What is this? What, why me? Like, why do I see this, you know, Allah, Kogbar, or whatever I see on my website? What did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? Is my website in danger of, you know, having anything worse happening to it? Uh, it gave me the opportunity to do some research, and of course, terms like, Security shortlist, root access, web shell. I've never heard of these things before. Like, what is that? Plugins and themes, vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities? What do you mean my site is vulnerable just because it's on WordPress? Or just because it's this theme? Or those 27 plugins that I don't use, but I keep it on, you know, just, ah, what if? And you never update? Anybody has plugins that they don't update? Keep your hands down. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you. <laughs> Uh, so what's the motivation behind, you know, why do they do that? Like, why do hackers hack? We have a saying in Romania, uh, t when you ask the horse, do you like to eat? And he's like, no, of course. So hackers will hack. Uh, sometimes it's because of the money they can make, revenue. Like, they can use any resource on your site just to make money. Maybe you are, I don't know, you have an online shop and you sell stuff. So if you don't properly secure the credit cards of your customers or something, that's an opportunity for them. Maybe you don't have credit cards. Maybe you have something else. Maybe you have personal information. Like they sign up for your newsletter. And that's also important because it can be a good verified list to spam later. Like it happened in my uh, case with that file on my server. Of course, they, they can go after your audience. Like if they, then, if they can do nothing on your website, they will think, okay, so you're, you're a very visited uh, website. Oh, so that means a lot of people come to your site. So there's a, there's a big, big chance that not everybody coming to your website will be very secure. Maybe they don't have an antivirus. Maybe they don't have a firewall. Maybe they have some shady you know, software that they don't really have license for, but they have a patch you know, on, from the torrents, like they have it. And all those patches usually are backdoor to your system, right? And you know, they will have the ability to take advantage and, and of the trust that the people already reading you will have, because I will always go to my favorite blogs and read them without thinking that I could be infected. Hey, I know this guy. I read his blog for five years. I'm not going to be hacked. He knows what he's doing, like, or maybe not. Or they could get for your resources. You are on a dedicated server. You have unlimited bandwidth. Like, we know what unlimited means, but let's say you have unlimited bandwidth. You have a good CPU time. So he's going to use those resources to attack other websites or other servers from your server. All the time happens. We call it the redirect attack, right? So you get a phone call from somebody, you're attacking my site. No, I'm sleeping. <laughs> no, no, you are attacking my site. Your IP is attacking my, well, my IP just got alive. And they can also integrate your site through the resources you have into larger networks like, you know, botnets and DDoS attacks, all those armies, you know, attacking one website for whatever reasons. And another <laughs> reason or motivation they have is, why not? If your website is so poorly secured, why shouldn't I go in? Like, if your WP admin username and password are I love Mary and admin 105, whatever, if it's really easy to guess, they will go in. Even if it's harder to guess, they will go in. And Maybe it's not about making money. It just allows me access. It's just a badge of honor. I go and brag to my friends, you know, hey, you know what I did last night? And he's going to go, yeah, I went ahead, you know, for some beers, I danced, and I went to bed at, what, 3, 4 a.m.? And he will say, no, I hacked four sites last night. Okay. Well, some people, you know, have a good thing about that. 
And, oh, that's a good question here. Who here has a backup solution right now for their websites? Wow, I never had so many hands up. Good, Jeremy, <laughs> very good. So if something happens, at least you know you have a backup, right? Which I didn't have for Shoebox. Or maybe I had some sort of shady plugin that was saving everything in the public HTML folder, which got deleted you know, by the hacker, because why not? Like I said, why not? And okay, they get access. Let's say they got in, like it happened to me. What do they do once they get in? What exactly are the hackers doing on your website once they gain access? Now, understanding the tactics that they employ pretty much makes you understand how can you protect yourself. And of course, let's not forget that what we see at, you know, at the surface is just like an iceberg. You never know what's behind. You never know how deep they go. And in the case of an infection or hack, uh, things are always more than they seem. Sometimes you don't even see nothing on your website. Like the website looks and behaves normally. There's nothing going on. Like there's no image change. There's no, you know, Viagra, Cialis, or whatever. Nothing. There's no redirection to porn site. Nothing. Works exactly like new. But in the background, somewhere you have a file. You have a new admin, <laughs> you know, that you didn't add yourself. And you have some things going on. So we need to pay attention to, you know, connection to anything else from the website. And we have some, I don't know how good you can see this, I hope, okay. So some infection types. Well, we found seven at security, but maybe there could be more. Malware distribution, search engine poisoning, phishing lures, spam emails, defacement, that's happened to me. Uh, DDoS bots, that's a really bad one when that happens, especially if you're not protected. Uh, and ransomware, recently, right? You hear about it all the time. It happens to computers, but also it happens to websites. So does anybody here doesn't know what any of those terms mean? Because I'm not going to, you don't know, which one? Ransomware. Ransomware is, are you familiar with the term when they go into your computer, they lock your files, and you have like just one image saying, if you want your computer back, pay whatever bitcoins, and you can get it back. Never happened to you? You either don't use internet or you're very safe about it. I don't know <laughs> which one, but congratulations. It's really awful situation, my dad had it happen to him. And from the computer, if they do that, now these days they start doing it on the website. So they go on your website, they could hijack your DNS, they could hijack your register. Like, you know the story with the Google guy buying google.com for 24 hours? Big glitch, and got the ransom out of it. But he was fair about it, he came up to Google saying, hey, I just bought you. Google forgot to renew google.com, if you can imagine that. And it was just the day before, and he got in. He was just playing, or at least that's what he said. So he registered, and for a few hours, he was the owner of Google.com. OK. Uh, large infection ties, like I said. So if anybody, I can talk to you in private if you want more, but you know these. So what are the impacts? OK, they got in on one of those types. So impacts after they hack you, <laughs> well, they're both, business and technical. If you don't do business, and let's say you're like, I was a charity, I didn't do like business, but you still have some technical impacts, uh, you know, effects that happen. For the business side, we have brand, we have economic and emotional distress, we'll go into details, and for the technical side, you have your website blacklisted, like I told you, it happened the next step after being infected. If you stay infected for, let's say, two, three days, usually Google will blacklist you. If you don't do nothing, you, you know, 48 hours, let's say, you know, happily, but after that, you'll get blacklisted for sure. Uh, SEO impacts, right? And visitor compromise. We'll go into details in here. So, brand reputation. I don't have to tell you what that is, right? So you get hacked, somebody comes to your website, and it's a big red screen saying, this website is attacking you, or whatever. So, what, this is, I, I know this guy, I've been reading this blog all the time. I, it can be infected, it can be the wrong side. The first thing you do is you check your URL again. So, you know, did I add one letter, did I leave it out? Did I, you know, is it HTTPS or not? Because sometimes they go to redirect. Do they have the www dot in front or not? Because you know, even there, there can be some impacts. And website plays a critical role in your brand. 
it's all about you. Like the users know your products, your colors. They know ex when you change your logo, you, they notice immediately, right? Oh, something's changed. Like look at Google. Google changed something like millimeters. And people were like, everybody was on social media. Like, Google changed their logo. And I took both of them, put them next to each other, and it was like two microns of the goo, you know, change, like a little bit to the sides. Who measures that? Like, how can you, like, do you do a screenshot every morning to see if Google changed the logo? I don't know how people find these. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a loss of trust. That's the first thing that hits your business, your project, your website, your private blog, doesn't matter. I trust your website. I come to it every day. And then one morning, whoa. It's not just a friend. It's Google. Hello? Google is telling me this website is bad for you. Don't come here anymore. Okay. Of course, economic. In the research that we do at Securi, we find out that 99% drop of traffic happens the first hours after you get impact. Like if you have a hack on your site and it's visible, 99% of that traffic goes down. And it's, well, if it's more room, you can go up if you get blacklisted, even worse. Like when you already blacklisted, nobody will come to the site. They will start emailing you. If they have your phone, they will start calling you. Hey, your website is down, something's wrong. And your site generates money, directly or indirectly. Like you sell stuff, right, on the website. You make money directly from the website. But maybe you don't sell directly on the website. Maybe you have a banner ad. Maybe some other company puts a banner on your site because you have a good traffic and you give them more you know, visibility. So that indirect money that you can win your website is out because <laughs> the website is already hacked. Like nothing is visible anymore. And of course, it's, if you try to regain access and you know, get back to your real life after being hacked, it's costing you money and time because you need to, let's say somebody from your staff did a stupid mistake about passwords, about, I don't know, anything like that. You have to educate your staff. You have to tell them, hey, don't use this password anymore. I love you, Mary. It's not good as a password for the root access. Or, you know, stuff like that. Because pe people do that. It's, well, it's my, you know, my son's birthday. Yeah, but it's not like it's a unique thing in the world, like atomic passwords, right? Uh, emotional distress. I'm just going to read you a list and li just listen. What happens to somebody that gets hacked? Anxiety, right? Why don't they move faster? I just sent them an email 30 minutes ago. You know, why is my website still hacked? Why is my website still suspended? What kind of host is this? Well, you just paid you one euro per month. Like, what kind of host services do you expect for one euro a month? You want to be protected, saved, and rescued at the same time for one euro? <laughs> I don't think so. Confusion, right? What exactly happened? How did they get in? You ask your host, they don't know. Because they will say, well, we just provide the network. We don't care. Like, what you do on your website is your thing. If something goes wrong, we just suspend it. Bye. There's, you know, they don't care. But they don't explain you <laughs> that when you do the sign up for this new offer. You know, take one, <laughs> you buy it. There's no fine print saying, oh, by the way, if you do get hacked, or if something happens to your website, we don't care. It's yours. <laughs> we just provide the connectivity to the machine. Anger. Well, we all know that, right? So uh, if I find that hacker, <sighs> You just want to go across the world and physically hug him, <laughs> okay? Because we need to be <laughs> civilized people. And then comes sadness, like just a feeling of, oh my God, there's nothing I can do. You know, it's really bad. I might, you know, lose my business. I might lose my money, and I don't know what to do. And then it's distrust, because somebody that got hacked and was in a situation where they almost lost not only the website but their business will have a perpetual distrust of technology, of everything internet, of people. Like, I will never provide access any, to anybody to my site. And like, even their IT department, like, sir, we need access because we need to update. No, nobody goes to my site. I will do it. Or I'll just, you know, that sort of a boss that comes next to you and he's inserting the password and then you can work and he stays there and he's watching you. Are you done? Yeah, but I still, yeah, okay, hurry up. And then you're finished, and then he goes, log out, just to make sure that he's logged out. You know? But sometimes it's better to be like that. <laughs> Website blacklisting, we start with the technical impact. So we saw the business ones, and these are the technical ones. Website blacklisting is the worst. People no longer reach your website, like we said. So let's 
think about this. If you're blacklisted by Google, Bing, or any of the big search engines, it will go deeper than just the search engines. You will reach into like, you know, now the antiviruses have those uh, scanning that they do on the websites, like AVG has the trust level and Avast and all those malware bytes, everybody. So you will go into that because this credit will go further on down the route and then it can lead into your website being globally you know, blacklisted by large networks like Cisco or WebSense. So <laughs> that's already bad, like very bad. And did anybody here have their website blacklisted before? I can see the sadness in your eyes. SEO impact. So the hacker has the ability to control what search engine results pages people see on your website. Right, S-E-R-P, SERPs, right? So people looking for Viagra, porn, Gucci bags, I don't know, whatever people fantasize about, they could go on your website because you have an SEO attack. SEO attack means that they insert keywords in your site, maybe doing like, you know, white text on white uh, background. You don't see them, there's, no, there's nothing there, but they just keep popping in, popping in, popping in. And anybody looking for Cialis or Viagra or stuff like that, will go to your website. Maybe your website, like we had one case, is a church website and it's Sunday morning and people go to it to see the stream of the service because they're sick, they're at home, they have children, whatever. So when they try to go online, you know, I'm not gonna show you a screenshot, but you can imagine what they saw. They didn't see a church website, okay? So injection of keywords is always uh, very used by the hackers. Also, they redirect your site depending on the keywords people look for, to their sites. So this is a very interesting one because they target browser version, they target, like if it's on a mobile, they target smartphone type, like brand and browser version. And they say, okay, if this is an Android of this version of this browser, when they search for Viagra, just redirect them directly to me because your domain authority is higher than theirs. So they will use your existing SEO authority to move traffic to their site. Is anybody clear with that? Not really. <laughs> Visitor compromise. Exactly like I said in the first one, if people come to your site, they get infected. That's easy. Like if something is there, they will, they will carry on to, you, to, theirs, uh, to their computer. Websites can be used to attack browser plugins like Java, Flash. I think Flash is going to be discontinued or that's the news. But yeah, it still happens. And compromise always include distribution of ransomware. We talked about it. So they have it somewhere in the background. You don't know. It could be activated later, much later, like not there when you're on the website. You can, you can even shut down your computer and one week later you'll see the pop-up. Hello, you want your computer back? You must pay. So. Since being hacked allowed me to you know, be in the position I am now, to have a new job and change everything about my life, I try to pay it forward uh, as much as I can. Being to this event uh, is one example, trying to talk to everybody and say that I put it here in caps, about website security, everything is serious. There's no fun, there's no jokes, there's no, you know, I could use some jokes in the, you know, in the speech or when I talk to you and I try to be funny too, but it's not funny. It's never funny because you lose money, you lose credibility, you lose audience, and ultimately you could lose your business. It's not, it's not something to be laughing about. And security is never, never a state. It's always a continuous process. Always you have to be careful of something else. What if, you know, you're protected for this version of WordPress, you're protected for this plugin, but what if they try something else? What if there's a new thing coming out? You always have to be careful, always have to be on the lookout because technology will never replace your responsibility as a website owner. I talked to somebody yesterday about this and I told them it's not so much of a visitor's responsibility to be protected, although it should, as it is your responsibility as a website owner to make sure that nothing happens to your website, not just because of your sake, but because of your visitor's sake. Because if they get infected, they will carry on the infection you know, further to other, uh, whatever, if they use USB sticks, if they visit other sites through the cookies, so many other mechanisms, but the original source was your site. And it's your responsibility as a site owner. 
Uh, and when you think about security, it's always a, a three things. It's always about people, process, technology, but always together. It's never just one. Like you cannot educate your people so good that they always you know, take care. And it's never that you know, if they don't follow the processes, even if you have them, they'll do nothing. And if you have the best technology in the world, how many people just buy a firewall and they go with what? Default settings. It should be fine. No, it's not fine. Your server, your site, your environment has very specific things that they need to be addressed. Not with a default settings. Default setting is usually like mild, you know, like just good enough, but good enough is not good enough for your website. You have to call somebody and hey, Help me do this. I bought it. <laughs> I'm just looking at it. What do I do with it? Security, like I said, is not a do-it-yourself project. This is what our Tony Perez, our CEO, says, but it's a very real thing because some people think that. Oh, I'll just do it myself. You know, I just go buy next, 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 and it's done. And then at the end, you see that it doesn't work. It slows your site. Something happened, and you don't know how to fix it because not everything in this world online works as I'm doing it myself. I like it to do it alone. Uh, there are people who don't like security. There are people who like it, who make a living out of it, and we should trust them. Uh, there are so many companies that do security, and you should trust the ones that actually do that every day. I mean, if, if I'm sick and I go to my grandmother or my dad or my mom or somebody and I ask, like, what should I take? What pills should I take? And I go to a doctor and ask the same question, well, who should I trust? The doctor or my mom or my dad or my grandmother? They will say, oh, just take an aspirin, it'll be fine. Uh, and maybe I'll go to the doctor and he'll have a very different opinion. Always trust the professionals. Uh, this is how you can find me. Oh, what an email I wrote there. See, that's what editing at 4 a.m. does to you. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to hear them. If not, then we can talk at our booth or whatever. Thank you. Oh, there's a question. Oh, you were running this morning, right? And you said you have a question. Okay. Yeah, he was first, and then you can go next. So the question is, if I know how they logged into Shoebox? Well, I saw some traces, like they added a new WP admin uh, username. Uh, the username was Burrito. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> uh, and they added some, so the HT access was modified to show that photo. Always, like doesn't matter what link you came to, even if you're like on a homepage or any other link, you always saw that. And there was an MP3 uploaded with, oh, 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 oh you know, something. <laughs> and that was it. And somehow, yes. I don't know if it's because of the command that I used for the FTP that could have been hacked. Anyway, I formatted my laptop, so everything was, <laughs> I really went, you know, all the lines. But it never happened before, uh, again. So, you know. So how do, how do we protect sites for ping back attacks? You're talking about XLM PC? X, XLM PRC, that's what you're talking about in WordPress? Ping back attacks. Yes? Okay. That usually gets shut down at the firewall level. Ripping it. Yeah. It usually this is stopped in, in the firewall level. So you know the firewall we employ is in the cloud because you switch your DNS to the firewall settings and all the traffic goes into the firewall and then all the valid one goes to the site. Yeah. The question is how do you detect this thing is not valid to 
I think this is proprietary uh, information. <laughs> I understand the question. I really can't really answer everything. <laughs> but you, you, we can talk, and I'll see what sort of information I can give you. Not really everything. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Oh, yes. Uh, we appreciate the competition. <laughs> That's what I think about other plugins. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Everybody's so polite this morning. So you go, you go. <laughs> I'm not a technical guy anyway, so perfect. My site. Maybe your site, and if you have, have a site, uh, what do you have like, in view? Okay, you so. Make it, make it, uh, I understand. We can talk more about this, but I, I'll, give, I'll share briefly. So there, there's two parts to it. We have a firewall solution that, like I said to that gentleman, you change your DNS to our settings, all the traffic goes to our DNS, all the good traffic. You understand whatever you want through good traffic, right? Like any weird attacks, anything goes back, all the good traffic goes to the site. And then there's a site, uh, uh, on the site scanner, they, you, you feed in your FTP credentials and it scans every file all the time, like every two, three hours, eight hours, whatever you want, sending you information of what's wrong, if there's a problem, you know, you see it. And then in the, uh, in the plan there's included, you can do unlimited cleanups, like, a year, if something happens in the site, we clean it for you. Like we have people going in. There's no tools employed. It's always security. Yes, yes. This is a generic description. We can talk more in private if you want. Please. You're going to ask me about ransomware now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. So our scanner runs all the time, but when the scanner finds something, you will also get a notification. Oh. Yeah, we all we also have a scanner, of course. And then anything that it looks suspicious, it's always manually checked, always. Like you cannot manually check five billion files, like only Superman. Yeah, well, you can check a lot of files manually, and you know, in years of experience, you can do a lot of them, but still you have to use some tools. But the actual disinfection, the actual looking inside the code is done by professionals, never by the tools. You can't trust tools that much. They have a lot of false friends, and they can just like delete real files just because a crazy developer added some crazy code doesn't mean it's infected. It's just because it's a really shitty code. So, you know, thank you. Anybody else? Have a, oh, you're just having fun, not <laughs> having a question. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you then. So thank you, Alan, for a great speech. Thank you. Thank you, There's one more thing, though.